Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just going to give a little bit of time so that folks can arrive into the virtual space before we begin. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Let's see how many folks we have. A couple are still trickling in. It's a beautiful day here in Philadelphia. I'm so glad that you decided to come inside from the sunshine and join us online for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. It's one of the first nice days that we've had in Philadelphia. So thanks for, thanks for coming and spending a little bit of time together today. Um, I am Stephanie Bailey. I'm the Education Program Manager and Preservation Consultant at CCAHA. And it is a real pleasure to welcome you today to this webinar entitled Woodpack Preventive Conservation Associate Experience presented by Marguerite Schindler. I couldn't be happier to introduce Marguerite and to thank them for their work in the Preservation Services Department this past year. It was a real pleasure to be on a team with Marguerite and I'm looking forward, as I know you are too, to hearing about what brought Marguerite to CCAHA and the passion for preservation that fueled Marguerite to spearhead two major initiatives while she was with us. One of the initiatives was a partnership with Archives for Black Lives in Philadelphia as part of the Community Stewardship Program and the other deep engagement in a series of webinars and virtual dialogue sessions called, Let's Talk About That, Dialogue and Change in Collections Care. Both of these projects generated rich conversation, built community, and produced a useful and accessible tool available for free on the CCAHA website. Marguerite is so, so very soon to be a graduate of the Winterthur University of Delaware program in art conservation. In fact, we were just chatting about graduation before we opened up the webinar and the timing is very, very close. It's like next week. So early congratulations. Marguerite has worked at institutions, including the Cleveland Museum of Art and ICA Art Conservation and is currently principal of Pearl Preservation LLC. They're working to combine preventive conservation and social justice, supporting traditionally marginalized collections by sharing information and empowering others. A passion for Jewish culture has led Marguerite to a focus in studying and impacting the preservation of Judaica in collections around the world. So that we can now hear from Marguerite, uh, I'd like to ask that you please mute yourself until after the presentation, when Marguerite will then take questions. Remember that a recording of this session will be sent to all of you in the next few days. If you wish to activate the captioning for this presentation, that option is available to you now. Uh, just go to the bottom of the screen and tap on the CC button. My colleague, Alana Schaefer is here in the Zoom room with us as well. And you can feel free to reach out to her via the chat box um, for any troubleshooting. Um, you can select the CCAHA from the pull down menu in the chat box. Lastly, if you prefer to type a question to Marguerite rather than ask her at the end of the presentation, ask them at the end of the presentation, that's okay too. You can just type the question into the chat box at any time. And at the conclusion of the webinar, uh, when you close out of the Zoom room, a survey will pop up automatically. We would really appreciate it if you would just take a moment to fill out that survey. This webinar of the Conservation Center for Art and Historic Artifacts is supported by the National Endowment for the Humanities, Independence Foundation, and the William Penn Foundation. Marguerite, thank you for sharing your time with us today. And I am now going to mute myself so that we can listen to you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Thank you for 
giving me this space and time to share um, what I've been up to this past year. Um, the year flew by and Stephanie and I were laughing at this picture earlier because it's it's the old logo with the curls and my old hair with more curls. Um, and so really a lot has changed over this year. And this presentation really gave me an opportunity to look back, reflect, and, and think through some of the really exciting things I, I worked on. Um, so like Stephanie said, my name is Marguerite. I use they, them pronouns. I am one week away from graduating um, the Winnetor University of Delaware program in art conservation. Um, and it's been a long time coming. It's been about a decade of working in museums, um, libraries and archives, and I'm just so thrilled um, to be a part of this community. And this fellowship experience has really set me up for success. And so with that, we'll jump right in. There we go. Um, so I'd like to start by acknowledging the land that I've had the privilege to live and work on for the past year. I believe that a land acknowledgement uh, should be about understanding our personal relationship with the land that we're on and how we got here. For me, both sides of my family originate in Eastern Europe and came to this land as Holocaust survivors and refugees who were given sanctuary from violent persecution and complete displacement. And on both sides, I am the second generation to be born on this territory, which itself came from the violent persecution of indigenous people. By acknowledging the Lenni Lenape and Wenake Hokan communities, I can begin to embody the Jewish value of tikkun olam, healing the world through, through reparative social justice. And so with that, I acknowledge that I currently reside on the unceded ancestral indigenous territory of the Lenni Lenape and Wenake Hokan people of the Delaware watershed who have stewarded these lands for centuries and continue to do so. The Conservation Center for Art and Historic Artifacts, CCAHA, um, I'm sure you, you may know, is, is a regional conservation lab uh, that specializes in the treatment of paper, photographs, and books. Located in Philadelphia, CCHA serves the region, but also works beyond Philly and is a really wonderful primary resource for cultural heritage and preservation needs around the country. In addition to treatment, CCAHA has a robust digitization and photographic documentation program an outstanding team of housing and framing specialists, um, and the Preservation Services Office, which is responsible for surveys and assessments, consultations, education and workshops, and emergency response and planning, including many other hats that they wear. And so one thing that drew me to this PSO setup and this particular team um, was how embedded education is within their structure. And I firmly believe that education is preventive conservation. And so with that, my fellowship was situated within PSO and I worked as part of the team on many projects. But for this presentation, I'll focus on the following. The surveys and assessments I was able to perform remotely and in person. The community stewardship program, a pilot program to support non-institutional collections. And the let's talk about that dialogue series and subsequent toolkit, which brought together really amazing and thoughtful presentations a great space to process and share our feelings and what we had learned, and a document that will hopefully ignite conversation between colleagues and within ourselves. Um, over the course of this year, um, I'm really grateful to have been part of four large-scale assessments. Um, assessments are an essential function of a preventive conservator. The ability to step into any collection, to describe the current state of the collection, to look around and identify risks and needs and connecting those needs with resources and action items. To me, that is the bread and butter of what we do here at PSO. Every assessment is dependent on the specific collection, making each one absolutely unique. Um, that challenge is, in my opinion, always exciting. And it really pushes me to consider what is important, why it's important, and the realistic goals in each circumstance. While each of these collections is worth sharing, um, the most engaging and visually stunning project was the cap assessment of Isaiah Zagar's Watkins Street Studio. Philadelphia Magic Gardens, or PMG, is a nonprofit entity dedicated to preserving and providing access 
to the work of artist Isaiah Zagar. Mr. Zagar is a prolific artist whose specialty is these beautiful, colorful mosaic murals. His largest and most famous work, the Philadelphia Magic Gardens, is owned and operated by the PMG nonprofit. The Magic Gardens site spans three city lots, includes indoor galleries and a large outdoor mosaic labyrinth. The dimensional immersive piece of installation art is a field of mosaics inlaid with poetry, quotes, names of inspirational artists, as well as portraits and the forms of people and animals. Isaiah Zagar, born in 1939, is an award-winning mosaic artist based in Philadelphia. He's most notable for these mosaic murals, of which the Magic Gardens is only one piece. In fact, since his first mosaic in 1968, he has created and installed more than 220 murals throughout Philadelphia. And they're still up, so I encourage you to, to go and walk around Philly and, and, and play I Spy with these creations. He's still incredibly prolific and continues to make work every day at the current age of 83. He was born in Philadelphia and raised in Brooklyn. Zagar received, received his BFA in painting and graphics at the Pratt Institute in New York City. Zagar's artwork is heavily influenced by his travels and the personal connections he made with international folk artists and visionary artists. Isaiah and his wife, Julia, completed three years of Peace Corps service in Peru in the mid-1960s. Soon after, they settled in Philadelphia and began their life's work of creating public art and fostering creativity in all its varied forms, with a particular interest in creating art environments. And so with that in mind, we'll talk about the Watkins Street building, which is Mr. Zagar's personal studio, and it was the focus of this assessment. This two-story fo former automobile warehouse is owned by Isaiah and Julia Zagar and is an incredible piece of Isaiah's vast art portfolio. The building has been completely transformed by Mr. Zagar. It was a true pleasure to have met him in this space and walked through it and listen to his experience of creating this work firsthand and learning from his, his guidance to describe his method and approach to his work. And so this space works as art store itself, um, and also a studio. And so on the left side, you can see a pastel drawing that Zagar drew the morning that we were there. And on the floor next to it, um, like a bag of cement dust that he was using for another project. So this space has a lot of things going on um, and has a lot of different functions that are still happening. And so um, talking through all of that with Isaiah was really, um, really an honor. Can I click through? There we go. Uh, the studio is about 10,000 square feet and is one of several additional buildings connected to the Zagars that PMG, the nonprofit, does not currently own or steward. Like I said, it's fully mosaic, indoor and outdoor, and has sculptural elements all over the place. In addition to serving as Zagar's active studio, the building also houses all his all all of his mixed media work: murals on panels, sketchbooks, photos, prints, textiles, books, book art, and more. And mixed in with Mr. Zagar's artwork are receipts photos, newspapers, folk art collaborations and commissions, blocks he used for printing like art manufacturer objects and so much more. Um, Executive Director Emily Smith described Watkins Studio as one big diary with artistic, archival, historic, communal and aesthetic value. And on the right side here, you can see one of these sketchbook, scrapbook, art creations that are bursting at the seams with a lifetime of creation. The goal of this assessment was to describe the collection, identify needs for the building and objects, and begin to prioritize decisions around legacy planning. And so our primary recommendations included beginning inventory efforts to increase intellectual control over the collection. Most crucial is to conduct an inventory of the collections 
that are at risk of losing context without Mr. Zagar's direct input. And while inventory may seem simple, intellectual control is actually incredibly important. It's not about copyrights or trademarks, but rather knowing what you have, where it lives, and how to get to it when you need to. Having a realistic understanding of the size, scope, and materials present can help make decisions down the line. If you don't know what you have, it's really hard to prioritize next steps. And PMG right now is in a transitional phase, facing the realities of working with a living and aging artist. Legacy planning is not an easy topic to approach, but having open and honest conversations will help protect the artwork while still honoring Mr. Zagar and his legacy. Most crucial is to get Mr. Zagar's vision and wishes for the future of the collections written down. And so with that, we'll pivot to another project, um, which is different. It works with collections that are not connected to large nonprofit entities, um, large um, grants or full-time employees. Um, this really is designed to support community-based collections. Um, and so CCHA has partnered with Archives for Black Lives in Philadelphia, which they're a really wonderful group. They put together this anti-racist description resources and are a really great group of information and library professionals. Um, and so in our partnership with them, we've put forth this new effort called the Community Stewardship Program, which seeks to engage and empower non-institutional collections by offering preservation support. Together, we have foamed the first cohort with Chester Digital Stories Initiative, the Yes Center, the West Philadelphia Cultural Alliance, and the Paul Robeson House and Museum, all of which are local community collections with an ongoing need of preservation support for their ar archives and historic artifacts. As part of this project, I've been producing collection care educational content, holding agenda-free office hours, and offering tangible preservation support for specific objects and sites. CCHA is producing a preservation glossary that meets new learners where they are while introducing useful preservation images and terms. When developing this program, which is really a pilot program, um, this was us really trying to see what would work and um, asking the community members what they needed and what would help them in this moment. And so we drew up this logic model which is a graphic representation of the relationship between a program's resources, activities, and its intended effects. Um, this was really to help helpful to kind of lay out in the beginning um, to see how we could leverage our formal knowledge of preservation and the digital infrastructure that CCHA already uses um, to make steps towards our outcomes and impacts. Um, the outputs are easily measurable. Um, the number of office hours we had, the number of participants that came, the number of in-person meetings we had. Um, and those were all really exciting. The outcomes, um, the outcome category is a little bit more esoteric, a little harder to measure. Um, but our goals were to build knowledge and awareness of preservation, build confidence in non-professional collection care groups, and build a community of stewardship. And I, I'm really glad to say that after this year, um, I think that in many ways, all of these outcomes have come to fruition. During our site visits and our conversations with um, the different groups around Philadelphia, we began unpacking these collections, both literally and metaphorically. We discussed storage practices, collection care policies, and their goals for the future. During these conversations, it became clear that the conservation field uses really specific words to discuss and describe collections that many people either don't know or would not think to connect to preservation. We realized that language was acting as a barrier, excluding those non-professionals from fully participating. And so that is how we decided to create a glossary with definitions, images, resources, and links that showcase key terminology in the categories of damage, materials, and general preservation. With more than 100 definitions and 80 corresponding images and diagrams, 
This resource is unique in its breadth of terminology and in how it supports a variety of learning styles. By including visuals and images, this glossary allows for further understanding of each term, hopefully allowing users to identify and apply it to their own situations. It is my hope that this resource eventually gets translated, making it more accessible to non-English speakers. This document can be found on CCAHA's website and is free to download and use. This was my favorite page and layout from the glossary, and I would love to see it as a poster hanging on um, studio or shop walls. This was really fun to think through and put together. Um, and while it was not a hands-on project with objects, it really took a variety of skills, including document design, technical writing, and a working understanding of the preservation field. It included researching existing glossaries, collecting appropriate examples, and considering the practical use of each entry. So far, the response to this resource has been overwhelmingly positive, and I look forward to continuing to make preservation more accessible. And finally, let's talk about the major education series we did this year. Let's talk about that. Actually, let's jump back a little earlier um, and note that in, in March of 2021, attendees gathered virtually for CCAHA's colloquium, Many Voices, Diversity and Collections Care, which brought together amazing speakers um, and highlighted some of the most pressing diversity, equity, and inclusion issues in the field. As cultural institutions across the world began to grapple with the events of 2020, confronting often for the first time how issues of equity and access have impacted their own communities, the resulting institutional dialogues have often been reserved only for those in leadership or in public facing roles. Collections care professionals and other similarly behind the scenes roles are frequently left out of these conversations, despite the tremendous impact of their work in documenting and preserving the world's cultural heritage. The collection care community remains eager and excited to do the work and have the conversations, but without a clear path forward on how to do so. And so the Let's Talk About That series was designed to combine this eagerness with the incredible work that was already being done in the field to begin building a DEIA infrastructure within collections care that can be sustainable beyond this moment in history. The goal is not to serve as a definitive authority on, on these topics, but rather a guide for continued conversation shaped by these community dialogues. There were six sessions in this series, each focused on a different issue in the field and was comprised of two components. A traditional webinar with speaker or speakers highlighting their own case study or observations in the field. And the following day, a community dialogue led by facilitator Sarah Ferrone of Dialogic Consulting. As each topic was discussed and processed together, key takeaways were compiled and used to build a resource document meant to serve as a guide for individuals or groups looking to begin expanding their work at, this, at their own organizations. And so out of these questions and case studies that explored them, the dialogue toolkit, um, was born. Um, it was designed to be a companion to these presentations, um, but can be used in many dynamic ways. It can be used independently um, or in tandem with the recorded presentations. Um, inside the document, it links to the recorded presentations, um, so it kind of connects all of the content together. And the toolkit also includes graphics, worksheets, additional linked resources, conversation starting questions intended to encourage, encourage users to dig deeper into these complicated topics. We want to encourage users to watch or read the transcript of the recorded presentations and use this toolkit afterwards to better understand their own perspectives, their own values, and the systems of which they are a part. This activity can be done individually for introspective learning um, or it's actually truly intended for use within a group to facilitate dialogue uh, between cohorts, colleagues, and communities. 
Um, and just off the top of my head, um, you can see on the bottom, the bottom row, the second one from the left, personal capacity inventory, gifts I can give to my community, um, is a page I just shared with a friend who is switching careers and doesn't know what steps to take, um, doesn't know how to pivot from one industry to another. And so I gave them this, this worksheet so they could do exactly what it says, list out all of the things that they know how to do. Um, and they can then look at this sum of skills and, and move forward from there in their application process. So that's just one um, non-museum way that this can get used. Um, I'm excited it will be used in, in many ways. And actually CCHA is, is interested in hearing how you do end up using this. And so please reach out to Alana Schaefer um, or Diani Figa with any interesting thoughts, comments, or uses. And so this is a picture of all of us and the Dipsney crew, um, the one time all of us were together. And I'm, I'm really just so grateful to CCHA and this group of wonderful colleagues for this year of learning and growing and sharing preservation with amazing new audiences. So thank you to the PSO team, including Diani Feige, Alana Schaefer, Stephanie Bailey, Amelia Emig, and Maddie Cooper for their support in a year full of challenges and uncertainty. Um, it was pretty crazy to jump into a full-time fellowship in the corona times, and um, CCHA has been nothing but gracious and understanding um, in this uncertainty. And so my next steps, um, I'm starting my own private practice, Pearl Preservation, and I'll, I'll be staying local in Wilmington. And I really look forward to staying connected with CCHA and working together to preserve the heritage of the region. And so with that, I thank you all and open the floor for questions. Thanks, Marguerite. Thank you. Thank you for going to, giving me the time and space. I actually, oh, there we go. I have the chat box open. And if you don't mind, I would like to ask a question. Please. There aren't any in the chat box yet. So I'm wondering if there are certain skills or experiences that you had at Woodpack that you maybe relied on or referenced frequently or that, and maybe that was surprising because at CCAHA you were doing so much field work. Um, were there any, any surprises there as you transition from the classroom, so to speak, to being in the field? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I think what I, my biggest takeaway from the Woodpack program is that if I don't know the answer, I know where to go look for it. And so being able, I mean, that that helps in every situation. And, I, and I'm the first to admit that I don't know everything. And as a preventive conservator, <laughs> as a preventive conservator, our goal is to really be kind of generalists in a lot of things and then be able to deep dive when a project requires it. And so I'm building my research library of, of reference material. Um, I've stayed connected within the conservation community both to learn about new research and information and resources coming out, but also to ask people questions. Um, people are really open um, and interested to chat about things that they're passionate about. And so knowing the right person to call when I have a question um, has proven a very useful tool. Yeah. And I'll also share that this work, I this year I did a lot of document design and organizing. And that is a skill I picked up. Um, at like a weird part-time job working for a business newspaper. I had to put together a lot of like marketing pamphlets and event brochures. Um, and that has actually served me really well um, because computer literacy and technical writing are really translatable skills. Yeah. And always good to have in the back pocket. Always. Well, I have to admit, I had an ulterior motive in asking you that question because 
Um, in my daily work, I get frequent questions about the differences between being in school and being in the field and how does that actually work for preventive conservation, mostly coming from folks who are interested in entering the field. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that I'm really grateful to you for having shared your experience with us in this webinar because like most of the work that you've done with us at CCAHA, this webinar will be a tool going forward um, and, and potentially influence or inspire the next, the next conservators, preventive conservators who are coming down the line. So thanks. Thanks for letting us look with you backward and, and especially forward. Thank you. Thank you. It was a really robust year. Um, and I didn't, I didn't talk about in this presentation any of my work with Judaica preservation. Um, that was like a different hat that I wore on my, you know, CCHA was my full-time job. And then my part-time after hours job was, you know, developing this field of Judaica conservation and preservation. Um, and so if anyone wants to chat with me about that or has any particular interest in that conversation, I'd be happy um, to chat offline. I'll also say that our um, Woodpack graduation, where I'll do kind of an extended version of this talk that does include all of the Judaica pieces, um, will be next week and you can zoom in. And so if anyone is interested in, in watching the graduates speak, um, please let, reach out and let me know. All right. Would you like to put your email into the chat box? Absolutely. So folks have it on hand. Well, this is surely a busy work week for you and next week as well. So in closing, I will say thank you for sharing your time. And- so oh, I sent it only to you. I have to send it to everyone. Oh, right. Oh, I don't think I can send it to everyone. Um, well, you know what? We will um, we'll share make sure to include it. Yeah, we'll make sure to share it in a follow-up email. Perfect. Great. Thank you, Margalee. I'll say goodbye for all of us for now, but not for long. We'll see you around. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm local and I'm looking forward to collaborating. And when you get weird questions about school, please send them my way. And when I have interventive <laughs> treatment, I'll send them to you guys. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. And thank you all. Take care. <laughs>